Ever been stuck in traffic before and thought, I wish there's a quicker way? Just drive on the shoulder, like they do in the Philippines. Traffic is so crazy there that one time when we were driving with a missionary, we hit the motorcycle in front of us. Oops. Stay tuned and we'll show you that video in just a moment. Hello, welcome back to Joshua and Alyssa. That's wrong. Welcome back to Around the World with Joshua and Alyssa. If this is your first time with us, welcome. If this is not your first time with us, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about traffic in the Philippines. We've mm -hmm. talked about the food. We've talked about some of the things you might see there. And today we're going to talk about what it's like on the roads. So getting right into it. We have a picture of vehicles, and you know what? This really doesn't help you understand what it's like no. because it is crazy, crazy, so very crazy. crazy. So we're going to show you some videos to help you get a better idea of what it's like. So let's see if we can get this to work. Uh, there we go. All right. There's an ambulance on the left side, and you know what? No one really is doing much about it. Just continuing to drive like normal. And see those guys hanging on the back? Just that standing there. <laughs> too full. Oh, there's a motorcycle. Let's. Okay, here we are going down a divided road, and over there on the left, you see us getting out of the way because someone else is coming back, and then we all move back over. Because we don't want to follow the slow guys, and pretty soon we're going to move back over for some other people coming through. You know, and they don't honk or anything or get upset. Now they, it's just normal. They let the other person get out of the way, and they just keep going. Mm -hmm. This here is another two-way road. But so instead of one lane going each way, it's four lanes going one way on the shoulder then we're taking up both lanes here and then on the left you'll see another motorcycle come by right there and mm -hmm. we are all headed into town and we don't wait for anyone else or you know give other people on the other side a chance to get through because we're all trying to get in <laughs> on this next video this crosswalk see the little <laughs> green person there i like this because i don't see this anywhere in the states as the time gets lower and lower the person starts moving faster and faster Phew. and see now if you're watching so you better be running because <laughs> you don't have much time left here we just have a hand that blinks this one's a lot more fun oh. and stop so if you're in the middle too late <laughs> all right so one of the main modes of transportation there is the motorcycle uh-huh motorcycles are everywhere they are a lot cheaper you can fit several people on one. You can squeeze into tighter spaces with a motorcycle than you mm -hmm. can with a car. You know, this is what most people would have. You'll see lots of motorcycles. Here, people ride motorcycles for fun. There, people ride motorcycles to get places mm -hmm. and because it's cheaper. What do you notice about the people on this motorcycle? Uh, it's a whole family. <laughs> it is a whole family. And there are four people there. A mom, a dad, two children. There's a little girl who's hanging on to her dad. And then a baby who's being fed a bottle. And of course, there's no seatbelts on a motorcycle. They're just all sitting on there and riding by like normal. Mm -hmm. That's just life. One way to get around. <laughs> These are pizza delivery motorcycles mm. from Yellow Cab Pizza. You know, why would you deliver pizza in a car? A motorcycle's going to get around traffic quicker. And uh, you're just carrying pizzas. You're not carrying, like, a load of whatever. <laughs> just put it on the back of your motorcycle. By the way, if you see anything that's really interesting or you think is really cool, put that down in the comments so that we can read it. Uh, let us know what you're thinking about what you're seeing here. There's motorcycles going down the road, and something else coming toward us in this picture is a tricycle. A tricycle is just a motorcycle with a little car 
um, carriagey kind of thing on yeah, the side. Yeah, just on the side, sidecar. And so now we're going to show you a video of what it would look like in a town as these motorcycles and tricycles are going by. Motorcycle, motorcycle, tricycle. Yep. Motorcycle. You don't see any cars. <laughs> Not here. Here is a picture of Alyssa with a really big, nice tricycle. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing though, you gotta be careful with these because you can't, uh, the missionary told us you can only fit up to eight people on mm. these things. Only eight. Uh, you have your driver and you can have someone sitting right behind the driver. You can have two people sitting in the sidecar. You can have two people sitting on the back of the sidecar and you can have two people sitting on top. Any yeah. more than that, it gets a little dangerous, a little risky, <laughs> so you don't do more than eight people. Now, one of our favorite modes of transportation in the Philippines is the jeepney. Mm -hmm. If you want to know the history of the jeepney, it's a really neat history. Put a comment down below, ask us. We will tell you more about why the Philippines has jeepneys. But these things are mass transportation. You can mm -hmm. fit, I don't know, 20 people back there. Easily. Maybe eight Americans. <laughs> um, but they're, they're all very colorful or very shiny or both. Mm -hmm. You see them everywhere. Now this is not a very good picture. I didn't have much time to adjust my settings to take it, but on top of this jeepney are at least 12 people. Mm -hmm. uh, there's probably more like 15, 16 up there, but it was too full inside, so they just got on top. <laughs> Here, this is not a jeepney, but as you can see, it is full of people. Uh, there's probably got to be 25, maybe 30 people inside there, and then there's a ladder to get on top so you can put more. Still more room. In the Philippines, you crowd as many as you can into, outside of, on top of, whatever, because if you just wait for something that has space, you're going to be waiting a while. You won't get places. So you just all crowd in. Here's like another cart being pulled by a motorcycle type vehicle. And there's about a dozen people there, probably more. I think they're farmers headed home for the day. And so. I'm just traveling down the road. <laughs> and now for the part that you've been waiting for. Dun, da, da. When we were driving and hit a motorcycle. Here is the video clip from that. See the guy in the green driving the motorcycle. We're coming to a stop here. Slowly, slowly. Oh, oh. and we hit him. <laughs> and the funny thing about this was he got out and he came back and he talked to our driver and he apologized for stopping too soon so that we hit him. Uh, he wasn't upset or anything. Uh, he thought it was funny. No one was hurt. No exchanging of insurance papers. Nothing like that. That's just life. Uh, he and just then, kept going. He just drove <laughs> off. So that was the time when we hit a guy on a motorcycle <laughs> and lived to tell about it. Or he lived to tell about it. Yep. All right. So now... That is traffic in the Philippines, and Alyssa is now going to tell you the third part of the missionary story. So, listen carefully. I'm going to let her go mm -hmm. on with that. Thanks. So, we left off our story. Tifam, the little girl from Haiti, she and her mom had made a second trip into town. They got stuck in a lot of rain on their way back. Her mom hurt her foot. They stopped at the missionary house and her mom is really interested in the stories about God and learning about who he is and how much he loved her. And eventually Tifam and her mom got back home and then we ended the story by Tifam's dad chasing after Victor, the missionary, and saying that he was going to make sure that that curse really did happen, the one that he put, the death curse that he put on Victor. So he's following Victor out into the rain. Now Victor came to their house to, to let them know that there was so much rain it was going to cause a mudslide into their valley. But Tifam's dad was like, that's not going to happen. I'm the witch doctor. That's not going to happen to me. So let's find out what happens next. So Tifam's dad grabbed his knife and started walking after Victor into the rain and all the storm. He's trying to look in between the raindrops and 
And he noticed that Victor was getting to the edge of a cliff and he thought, this will be perfect. Victor will slip and fall off the cliff and then it will die just like I asked for the evil spirits. So he grabbed onto his necklace as well. This was his charm to help protect him, but made things happen. So he thought. He continued to walk and follow and he was watching Victor really closely and didn't look where he was stepping. And Tifon's dad stepped into a hole between two rocks and caught his leg. He cried out in pain, first of all, and then realizing he was going to need help, he started yelling. Victor heard him and turned around and saw Tifon's dad stuck. And he, he bent down and he helped him up. And, and um, Victor said, well, why, why are you coming after me? Tifon's dad had to come up with a lie really fast. Well, I thought maybe we should check on the people at the edge of the village to make sure they were safe, so I was coming with you. Not the truth. He was after him to kill him. And Victor said, well, let me help you. I think there's a hut here close by. We'll, we'll go over there. But really, you should have brought your wife and Tifon with you. The rain has made everything into mud, and there will be a landslide. The whole valley will be buried. Tifam's dad laughed. Ha! Not my house. The spirits will protect my house. I am the witch doctor. I am the witch doctor of the valley. Nothing will happen to my house. So they went inside and sat down and they could hear the rain coming and all of a sudden they heard a different sound. It wasn't rain. It wasn't thunder. It was a louder sound. It kept getting louder and louder and they realized it was a landslide. And mud rushed past this cabin all the way down into the valley where Tifam and her mother were still in their cabin. As soon as the sound settled down, they opened the door and, and Tifam's dad took Victor's arm and, and he limped out and saw his house was gone. It was buried. My wife, my Tifam, what are, where are they? And they hurried down together through the rubble trying to look around and Tifam's dad stopped. He looked down and saw something. His wife was dead. Tifam's mom had died in the mudslide. He was heartbroken. What? And my daughter, what happened to Tifam? Well, in all of this, Tifam tried to open her eyes. She felt something was in her face, something was on her arms. Her body just ached all over. And a little in the distance, she could hear some talking. She realized it was her dad. And, and another voice, help, she called out weakly. Her dad heard, and they, Victor and her dad came over. <gasps> Tifam was still alive. She had managed to somehow slide into a space in, in all the mud, and, and she was still alive, holding tightly onto her charm. She still thought that was going to help protect her. Tifam and Tifam's dad and, and Victor came over, and they began to dig around to try to loosen the mud. And Tifam said, oh, I hurt all over. Where is mama? I miss my mom. Tifam's dad just answered flat. She died, nothing else. Poor Tifam. Well, Victor helped get her the rest of the way out and they called for some missionaries to help get Tifam and she had a lot of cuts on her arm and her body was very bruised. And the missionary said, we'll take her back to our home since they didn't have anywhere to stay. Their home had been destroyed by the mudslide. So Tifam went back to the mission house and Tifam's dad went and stayed with her sister, Rosa, who lived in the next town over. So he stayed with Rosa for a little bit and Tifam went to the house. While she was at the mission house, another missionary, Mrs. Turnbull, was there and she helped bandage up and clean up Tifam and, and she told her it was going to be all right and Tifam still said, I, I don't want anything to do with you and, and that's why bad things have happened is because you're here and because, and you're talking and you talk to my mother and, and all these things happen, it's all your fault. And Tifam was angry. But Mrs. Turnbull just gently cleaned her up and said, no, God loves you. God is taking care of you. God has a plan for you. There's something special for you, Tifam. He's protected you from all of this. Well, as the days continued on, Tifam began to get a fever. She was very hot and her sores on her body were not healing well and they realized she was going to need more medical help. But because of all the mudslides, there was no way to get her out of they, the village. They weren't able to walk the rest of the way or take any, any animals or transportation. They really needed an airplane or a helicopter. So the missionaries began to pray. They said, Tifam, we're going to pray that God will send a way to take you out of here. And Tifam said, it, it, it won't happen. There's no, it, it cannot. I cannot. I, the evil spirits, they will help me be better. But one day passed, nothing. 
Pifong thought, ha, their god is not real. Two days passed, nothing. She was starting to feel really, really sick, having a hard time focusing. And the third day, there was a sound. It was a helicopter. It had come from the mission the next village over. They had come for Tifam. The missionaries came to Tifam's dad and said, please, can we send her? She really needs medical help. She needs some more than what we can give her. Please let us send her in the helicopter. Tifam's dad was very unsure of this. He didn't like the idea of Tifam going far away with the missionaries who had caused all this problem. But they continued to ask, and finally, Tifam's dad gave in. He said, she can go for a little time, but she has to come back. She cannot stay. She must come back. And as Tifam got ready to go into the helicopter to leave, Tifam's dad leaned in close. Don't listen to anything those missionaries say. All they have to say is not truthful. It's all lies. And your mother is dead because of them. The evil spirits are unhappy. And if you listen to them, I will put a curse on you too. Yikes. So we'll have to see what happens next time. Tifam listens to the missionaries. If she gets help, if she feels better, what's going to happen with her dad? Just have to come back next time to hear what's coming up. Wow. Okay. We're going to talk about some friends of mine and Alyssa's mm -hmm. that we went to school with, one of whom was my roommate, and they are in the country of France. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at Tyler and Catherine Betts, or she also goes by Cat. So I know Tyler from when I was a child. We went to camp together, and then we went to college together and were roommates, as I mentioned. And there they are, Tyler and Kat and their son, Liam. And uh -huh. they just went to France... Um, Around Christmas time, I think. Yes, December 30th, I believe. So, they are now there in language school. They live in a suburb of Paris called Massey. So, you may have seen a picture of Paris before. Eiffel Tower! And the Eiffel Tower. Uh, they actually got engaged in front of the Eiffel Tower several years ago. They don't live right there near the tower, but they live in a suburb. Tyler has joined a board game club that meets every Friday night. Unfortunately, they are not meeting right now because of you know what. <laughs> <laughs> and he has used this to learn his French and English better. And one of the men who you see right there with Tyler offered to give Tyler a flight in his airplane. So Tyler took him up on that. And um, it was a little scary. And anyway, they did it and he enjoyed it. And so that is one of the things Tyler is doing to reach out to people. Now, Tyler told us a little bit about the food there. Cheese, uh, there are over 16 or there are 1600 different kinds of cheese Phew. in France. That is a lot of cheese. And this one does not look very yummy. Um, <laughs> for me, I, I don't know. It just doesn't look like something I would like. And the other thing that they really love in France is bread. Mm. And there is at least one bakery in every town, oftentimes in every one in every neighborhood. They will go and get fresh baguettes twice a day. And here you see Tyler with his. Yep. So they do have other tasty foods there as well. All right, there is their son, Liam. And speaking of children... Uh, the children still have school there, even though they're at home. The teachers have sent home homework for them, and the kids are expected to get it done. But in the summer, and who knows what it'll be like this summer, but typically during the summer, the kids like playing outside, playing at the parks, watching TV, and he says they ride scooters a lot. Mm. He said it's crazy how many kids have scooters here. So I don't know what that's like. I know some people have scooters here, and we have them that you can rent in downtown Minneapolis, 
But, well, um, not right now. Well, yeah, right now they're not there. But anyway, apparently the kids there have them a lot. Here's a picture of Kat, the girl there in the light gray, in language school. Their school system's a little different there. Every six weeks they get a two-week break. Hmm. I don't know how that would work here, if people would like that or not. But this week they are beginning a two-week break from language school and actually last week sorry they aren't that excited about it since they can't leave their apartment and do anything so what good is a two-week break <laughs> so they would appreciate prayers uh, again this week during the second half of their two-week break that they would continue to learn french and find productive things to do while they are in quarantine he says that language school is a bit different now uh, they're still grateful that they can meet online for two hours and then have an hour of individual tutoring each week. It's very interactive and it's helpful for them to retain what they are learning. Uh, obviously, they are just learning for the <laughs> first time like, like kids would do. Uh, so he said they feel like kids in an adult body. Um, they are saying ridiculous things all the time, which is to be expected. It happens. We've all been there. <laughs> uh, one of the funniest things that Kat said was, J'ai mangé mon mari, which means, I have eaten my husband. Oops. <laughs> um, thankfully, she has not eaten her husband. He is still alive. <laughs> uh, but she forgot a preposition which means with. So she meant to say, I have eaten with, with. my husband. And instead she said, I've eaten my husband. <laughs> Phew. So, Good thing Tyler's was still alive and made it through all that. <laughs> yes. Uh, this next picture here is a picture of them in front of the church that they are going to work with when they are finished with language school. Um, so there they are. He said, right now you can only leave your apartment for approved reasons, which sounds a lot like here. Your job, buying food, medical stuff. If you're caught without an approved reason, your fine is about $150 to $400. Phew. And that it can increase to about $1,600 Ouch. if you're caught twice within 15 days. And if you're caught three times within 30 days, that comes out to about $3,900 or $4,000 oh. and imprisonment if you are caught three days or three times within 30 days without a good reason to be out. Yikes. <laughs> so that is Tyler and Kat in France and that mm -hmm. is what life is like right now for them. They're also in language school like Andrew and Janae Gownerman are mm -hmm. and uh, they are learning to get along in the country, making relationships with people. So pray for them as they're in quarantine right now that they would continue to learn, that they would continue to improve their language but also that they would have opportunities, whatever that might be right now, to keep building relationships with people. If you have more questions about them and their ministry, again, send us a message, leave us a comment below. Mm -hmm. We have enjoyed being with you again this week. We look forward to next week. Please, if you liked it, give us a like. Yep. If you want to receive a notification when we put out more videos, subscribe, share with anyone who you think might enjoy this. And we will look forward to your comments and talking with you again next week. Bye. Bye.